Great. Now that we've seen how the perturbation theory works in the case where we have a degeneracy, we're going to have a little bit more of a formal derivation of it, not too formal. Again, we'll start with a twofold degeneracy. Now, the fact that it's a twofold degeneracy uh, just makes our life a little bit easier, but we'll see as we go that it's very easy to generalize uh, this method for if it's a threefold or fourfold degeneracy, if there are more levels with the same energy, it's uh, it's very easy to to expand it. Um, so we expand um, the Schrodinger equation as we did for the non-degenerate case. So we take this one and we collect powers of of uh, lambda. So I guess this is slightly different to how we did it last time, but similar enough. In fact, maybe that's a useful thing anyway to see a slightly different way of, of approaching it. And again, I'll use what we know, which is that we can keep only the uh, first order in the wave function to get the second order in the energy. Okay. So we write something like this that has all of the powers of lambda and we're going to keep only the first power in lambda. That is H naught psi one plus V psi naught is equal to E naught psi one plus E one psi naught. I think I need to give this uh, equation a a name. I'll call it asterisk. And so I take this one and I'm going to use it twice. So firstly, I'm going to multiply it by the bra. psi a naught and integrate. It's very similar to what we did before. So if we look at the first term on the left hand side, this one here, and the first term on the right hand side, they're actually exactly equal to each other because you can apply the H naught to the left and pull out the E naught here. So the first terms cancel. And then, because this is a two-level system, we can write psi naught as a linear combination of psi a naught and psi b naught, which will give, uh, if I substitute it into the left-hand side, I'll have alpha psi a naught v psi a naught which is v a a plus beta v a b is equal to alpha times e one from the right hand side 
and say A naught, say B naught is zero by construction because we assume that say A naught and say B naught are orthogonal to each other. So that's our first equation. And then I go back and I multiply it by psi b naught. And I'll leave that as homework, but you'll obviously get to a very similar equation. This time this will be alpha VBA plus beta VBB equals beta times E1. So if we look at these two equations that we've just written down, we can collect them into an eigenvalue problem. And that looks like the first equation, VAA, VAB, VB, second equation is VB, v, v, B, B. oops, that's wrong, VBA, VB, B times alpha beta, so that's the left hand side of those two equations, and the right hand side of those two equations is E1, the eigenvalue alpha beta. And incidentally, this is uh, easy to see now how you would go to more than twofold degeneracy. You just add more rows to the matrix. And now we see why we only chose to have twofold degeneracy instead of three or fourfold degeneracy, because the next thing we're going to have to do to solve this eigenvalue problem is take the determinant of that uh, matrix and doing that for more than two by two matrices is not so much fun. So the solution to this eigenvalue equation is the determinant of the characteristic equation equals zero. And obviously, if it's three or four, three by three or four by four matrix, it's a little bit more difficult, but you can always do it easily with a computer. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's a two by two matrix. And so we can just write the solution as E1 equals, and you, again, you should check this at home. Um, and you should be able to do this if necessary in an exam. And so that's the eigenvalues. That's going to be the, the uh, lowest order eigenvalue correction because we only kept the first order in lambda. And the corresponding eigenvectors are going to be the good way functions. Finally, I want to talk about a trick that can help us to find the good, good eigenstates. So this trick has use particularly if there are symmetries of the problem that we can exploit. Uh, but it's not always useful, but sometimes it's incredibly useful. If there exists some operator, A, that commutes with both the unperturbed and the perturbed uh, Hamiltonian, And sometimes there is, in fact, often. I.e., we've got H naught A and commutation H naught. Oops, so I wanted to say it all. And A V equals zero. Then, if our good eigenstates, 
psi mu and psi nu are eigenfunctions of of a i they can be degenerate in energy but they're not degenerate in 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 a in other words um we have a psi mu naught is equal to a mu so that's some eigenvec eigenvalue a mu and we have a psi nu a nu psi nu uh, with a mu not equal to a nu, in other words, they're non-degenerate with respect to a, then v mu nu is equal to zero. And that gives us a means of finding mu and nu. So let me quickly just prove that and then we'll get to our strategy. So here's the proof. We have psi mu naught a v Remember, AV here equals zero by definition. So any uh, integral I do with that will be zero. Um, but I can also expand the commutation relationship to be sum so naught AV psi nu naught uh, minus psi u naught v a and then I can apply the a operator to the left on the first one which gives me a mu and then v mu nu minus and now I can apply the a operator to the right and I'll get a nu v mu nu right and I should probably uh, say that a mu is real here but okay I can put a little star there if you like and so that's equal to a mu star minus a nu v mu nu equals zero. Uh, but a mu or a mu star is not equal to a nu. And so therefore I have to say v mu nu must be equal to zero. So I guess I need to be more careful about what I mean by a mu is not equal to a nu. Um, in any case, this gives us a strategy. And strategy is one, identify an operator A such that the commutation relationships 
that we need are zero. Uh, two, choose eigen functions which are simultaneously eigenvectors of H naught and A and these are the good ones And then three, use regular perturbation theory. And you'll be happy and safe in the knowledge that V mu nu will be zero and there will be no runaway energy denominators that will uh, mess things up. Okay, and that's it for perturbation theory. Uh, there'll be some practice questions for all of that in the tutorial. And thanks very much.